it's good to have uh, Alex and Alicia, Alicia uh, Granham, uh, heads of the Shoaling Elim Church over in Shoaling, and it's good to have them here. I am um, at, a, at a South Coast um, ministers meeting oh, probably about two years ago, a bit more, three years ago. Uh, Alex led worship. I don't know if you remember this. I think it might have been over in Portsmouth, and I thought this is brilliant. And there was such an anointing on it um, that I thought well, we've got to have him to do that and also to preach. Um, because it will give you a break not seeing me every week, and I can't lead worship anyway. I'm certainly not a worship leader. Um, but, it, but it's great um, to have Alex here and Alicia. Let's just welcome them. <laughs> and um, others from the church members as well, and also lovely to have Pastor Richard and Maureen from Wellow Christian Centre. And quite a few people around as well, so it's good. It's good. Um, I'm just going to give some very brief notices, which are not really just a reminder that next Sunday is Mothering Sunday here, and we'll be reflecting that in our service. Um, and um, yeah, so we're here tonight. Alex will be leading worship and um, preaching as well, and doing whatever the Lord uh, leads him to do. There will be refreshments afterwards, served in the minor hall. Um, when when the Lord's finished, what He wants to do here. Let's pray, dear God. We thank you for this day. Lord, at this time, Lord, we just remember our Christian brothers and sisters in, in, in Ukraine, and also Belarus and Russia, but in Ukraine, Lord. They can't meet quite like this, Lord, without fear. So we do remember them, and we pray, Lord, for peace in that land. We pray that you'll send angels to do your work and bring relief in that land, and that we will hear real tales of how your, your spirit has moved. Um, and so we pray you'll do a mighty thing there. I pray for every person in this room tonight, Lord. Some of them may, may feel close to you or far away, but I pray, Father, that every single one of us, myself included, will sense your, the presence of your Holy Spirit tonight, and we will, and we will know, Lord, that you have been here, um, and we thank you for the tremendous privilege of meeting together in your name. Amen. real privilege for us to be here and uh, it's good to have them with the Lord Jesus with us here as well so it's very encouraging. We want to meet with God, don't we? That's why we're here. We want to hear something fresh from Him. We want to have an encounter with Him. We want something different with Him. And so my prayers as we worship and as the word is spoken, you will find something new to hold on to as you pursue a relationship with God, a God who loves you. So let's begin by praising him, Hosanna. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. Because in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. Yes, Lord, we turn to you. In your presence, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Because when we see you, find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed 
washed away, they're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. You're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everlasting God. Amen. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Deliverer, 
our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not think you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like you this evening because you are the everlasting God and for some of us in this place if not all of us we know what it is to find ourselves weak to find ourselves troubled and to be able to call upon you and see you come and rescue us oh God so we praise you Here I am down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you. Desperate for you, I surrender. Drench my soul, drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst, I hunger and thirst, with arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry, speak to me now, speak to me now, I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know. wind like a rushing wind Jesus breathe within Lord have your way Lord have your way in me like a mighty storm stir within my soul Lord have your way Lord have your way in me like a rushing wind, like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe within, Lord have your way, Lord have your way in me, like a mighty storm, stir within my soul, Lord have your way, Lord have your way in me. I surrender, I want to know you more, I want to know you more, I surrender, I 
surrender I want to know you more I want to know you more Thank God let something be different in our lives tonight as we recognize your lordship in our lives as we recognize that promise you made that two or more gathered together in your name you are present lord may we take hold of something fresh from you this evening oh god we bring ourselves before you and father god we put aside our pretenses we put aside our concerns we put aside our fears and say lord we want to set our eyes upon you we want to take hold of all that you have for us and every encounter in your body, every encounter in church is an opportunity, Lord, to take hold of what it is you have for us. So God, help me. Help me to see beyond <coughs> my concerns. Help me to see beyond my fears. Help me to see beyond the works of the enemy to distract me so that, Father God, I can truly take hold of your hand tonight in a new and special way. There's a grace when the heart is on the fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden. Death left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning, either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding What power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody and now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. No. 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 
stands between us nothing stands between us thank you Lord there's nothing standing between us right now in your presence right now we are in your presence and Lord I pray that every one of us can sense that truth that reality that the day you filled us with your spirit that you came to reside in us we had this one-on-one -on -one interaction with you that you've never abandoned, that you've never left behind. And it is for us to lock into the truths of that and walk with you daily. I pray you bless <coughs> every person in this place right now tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you. In our, oh, my notes. In our church in Solang, I don't use the, I don't plug in my guitar because maybe it's acoustic, acoustics, maybe it's the size, I'm not sure, but I don't normally plug in my guitar. But it's a real joy to be with you this evening. Now, I've got to say, Dave is a very brave man. He's given me this pulpit to speak today. So I'm going to tell you how it's going to go. We just had a wonderful time of worship. And we will finish with some worship. But this time, I'm setting the cat among the pigeons. And I said it in a nice way. The word of God is meant to challenge us. The word of God is not to make us feel happy or lucky. The word of God is meant to open our understanding and when you look in the Bible, you see the disciples 
struggled to understand the powerful truth that Jesus was sharing. And right through the scriptures, we see him continually challenging them to get to where he was. And I think it's the same today. I think we're so comfortable in our church and, and, and in our Christian experience, but the word of God is meant to shake us up. The word of God is meant to wake us up. And so, as I get my notes here, put on your seatbelts. <laughs> Whatever happens, he's going to sort it out after. Or John, the sound man. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 18 to 21. <coughs> Sorry. Ephesians chapter 5, 18 to 21. Very familiar passage for some. And I'm sure you've heard it spoken on many an occasion. Paul is speaking to, or is written to the church in Ephesus. And he writes to them, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. It's incredible how many verses in the Bible focuses on singing and rejoicing and happy expressions. Worship is very important in the life of the believer. And so we see here Paul emphasizing the place of worship. Now, if you follow on chapters 5 and 6, he begins to speak about the relationship between a husband and wife, the relationship between children and parents, the relationship between employers and employees, and then it goes into that one of spiritual warfare, how we deal with our enemies. But before he goes into the depths of how we live that out, he brings us back here to worship. And it seems to suggest in the scriptures that worship is key to our living out of a Christian life. So let's see where Paul takes us today. He begins with two commands here in these texts. Do not get drunk with wine. It results in debauchery, excess Reckless living, immoral behavior. And for those of us who have been on this path, we know very well what Paul is talking about. It's the same word that Jesus used to describe the prodigal son. He lived a life that was reckless, that of the result of being drunk. Now, for those of us who've been on this path, we know well drinking alcohol loosens us up. It, it creates a happy, joyful feeling. It creates a fellowship. You go into the pub with one friend, and you can come up with a whole band of new brothers, and everything is just changing. It's this happy atmosphere. But it comes at a cost. It results in immoral actions, behavior. It results in false courage. And eventually, if you've gone too far, an awful hangover. And Paul is telling the believers, don't get stuck into that. Don't get stuck into this false joy, this false relationship, because it's not going to last. There's something far better. He says, don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. But what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? <coughs> When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, his spirit comes and resides in us. We understand <coughs> the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to say, be filled with spirit? I've got a spirit already, he lives in me. 
I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. His power lives in me. So why is he still telling us to be filled with the Spirit? As a designated driver, going out with my friends, there are certain steps I must take to make sure that I don't fall to the power of alcohol. I have to arm myself with the knowledge of the consequences that could happen if I fall into that trap. I have to resist the temptation of those around me who says, have another one. But most importantly, I choose not to yield myself to it. I choose not to yield my self-control to it. I have to decide from the start, I'm not going to give over the control of my mind, my behavior, my actions to it. Well, the Holy Spirit, to be filled the Holy Spirit, takes us in the other direction. You see, if you look at being filled the Holy Spirit, five key points come to mind. The first is that of control. As liquor controls the life of the drunkard, the Spirit of God should control the life of the believer. When someone is drunk, it takes control of the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they think, their behaviors, their attitudes. When the Holy Spirit is in control of a person, he also takes control of the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they think, the, our attitudes and our behavior, our actions. So if we're going to be filled with the Spirit, we have to yield our control of ourselves to the Spirit of God. The second thing it speaks about is completeness. The word fill means to be full to the top, lacking nothing. It's a yielding of ourselves totally to the direction of the Holy Spirit. His will should be our will. His thoughts should be our thoughts. His desires should be our desires. He wants complete control of our lives. You see, every day, I don't know about you, but every day, my will clashes with that of the Holy Spirit. Or is it just me? Whew, I was close. We know very well our will and the power it has. Is it possible, am I pursuing my will and my agenda? Is it possible that I am not giving room to the Holy Spirit to have his way? The next word that comes up, the next point is consistency. The verb is in the active tense. It means that it's something you're meant to be doing continually, all the time. In fact, the Greek structure of be filled with the Spirit means be being filled with the Spirit. Be being filled with the Spirit. In other words, it's not something that I can control, but it is something that I can allow. And then there's compliance. The verb is in the passive voice. The filling is what happens to us. So if I'm going to pray for God to fill me, I can pray. But it seems to me that when it comes to experiencing the filling of the Spirit, it all comes down to our willingness to obey the Word of God. There's no point in my praying, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me, if I'm not prepared to obey the word of God. When Jesus was in the garden praying in Gethsemane, and he saw what the will of the Father was, he, said, he had to come to the place where he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. How often in our Christian lives do we find ourselves saying, Lord, not my will, but your will be done? We say the prayer, the Lord's Prayer. We can repeat it over and over again. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray the willingness for the will of the Father to be done on earth. But when Jesus told the disciples to pray, we should be praying our willingness 
that the will of the Father be done in us. In the same way, the Holy Spirit hovered over the darkness, the deep, in Genesis. As soon as the word of God was spoken, the Spirit of God acted. When our will clashes with the will of God, our will becomes chaos. And it requires us recognizing the word of God, the will of God, and in doing so, the Spirit is able to act in our lives. I'll give an example. I was at a friend's house not too long ago. It was a wonderful time and I was enjoying myself and then the time came to pray. I had made up my mind it was going to be a quick prayer. Lord, I'm not in the mood for any big, long, major prayers. I'm just going to say a quick prayer. And then that'll be it. Then I go home. Was that the will of the Father? They don't have to answer. It's a rhetorical question. We got together to pray, and I already had in my mind how this prayer meeting was going to go, from my, at least my part in it. And then we began to pray in tongues. Well... <laughs> My agenda was short-lived. As we began to pray in tongues, as we began to just pray in tongues, we began to worship in tongues. As we began to worship in tongues, I felt a fresh enabling, a fresh empowering that motivated me. I don't know how long we prayed for, but it was a lot longer than I imagined, and prophetic words were being spoken, things were being said. I had to say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And the last point here, when it comes to being filled with the Spirit, it's a command. It's a command we've been given. It's in the imperative mood. This means there's something that we must do. Paul is not offering us an option for living, but it's laying down the command of God for our lives. We must be being filled with the Spirit. I must be pursuing the will of God through His Spirit in my life. So, having said that, as I said before, Paul focuses on this before going into the whole aspect of Christian living in our families, with our bosses, with our community, etc., etc. Paul then takes us into a different place here. He begins to describe a worship experience, and this is where I want us to go this evening. He begins to describe this worship experience that comes out of yielding our lives to the Spirit of God. And that's important. We're meant to yield our lives to God's Spirit. What happens when we yield our life to God's Spirit? And this is where I'm going to touch on a few things. What he tells us here clearly, don't get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. When we're filled with the Spirit of God, he enables us to address one another. He enables us to speak to one another. And as I look at this experience, I'm seeing a worship experience. I see here a group of Christians coming together, and Paul is telling them, you address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the place of worship, as a person yields their heart to the Holy Spirit, he enables them to speak words to one another. Not just speak words. So often when we think about worship in church, we come in, someone's at the front with a guitar or the keyboards, we stand up, we sit down, we sing songs. But being filled with the Spirit means that when I come into this place of worship, if my heart is focused on the things of the Spirit, 
if I am yielded to the Spirit of God, He will enable me to speak words of life to those around me. And so I want to challenge you this evening to open yourself to the Holy Spirit moving in your hearts and in your minds. So often we think it's the leadership or the pastor that has to speak these words. But when we look in the scriptures, we're meant to be addressing one another. There should be a freedom in the spirit where as we worship, he will give us something to say that can encourage someone else. This is what he says here, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 26 to 27. What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn. A lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation that all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. He's speaking about the spirit. We're seeing a worship experience here. We're actually worshiping God, and as the spirit is moving, he lives in every one of us, as the spirit of God is moving, there's an interaction, there's a dynamic taking place between ourselves and God the Father, between ourselves and God the Son, and between ourselves and God the Spirit, and as the spirit of God is moving in every one of us, not necessarily everyone will have a word, but are we open to hear what he wants us to say? Are we yielded to him so that he can minister to us and through us? And so there's this dynamic going on where the Spirit of God is able to minister through you to someone else. That's why he says, be being filled. The Holy Spirit doesn't take a holiday. I tell people time and time again, my God doesn't wear pajamas. He's always working. He's always doing something. He's always acting. So we see here, there's a place where the Spirit of God will lay something on your heart to speak to someone, and it is a word that will build up. It's a word that encourages. It's a word that releases. Then he says here, not just addressing one another in that way, but Psalms, and he says the word Psalms here, and Psalms here brings me to the thing of the Old Testament scriptures. It's a scripture that is is being used to encourage others with Psalms. Every now and then in our worship, The Lord may lay a scripture upon your heart for somebody. He's saying, share it. Give it to that person. Let them receive something from the Spirit through you. But not only are we meant to be giving these scriptures out as the Holy Spirit gives it to us. We're meant to be singing hymns. Now when we see the word hymns, what comes to mind is amazing great rock of ages. We think of these hymns today, but in those days, Paul wasn't singing those hymns, was he? What was Paul singing in those days? Well, we understand a hymn would be a song in direct praise to God. A hymn would be a song in direct praise to God. So sometimes when I'm worshiping, when someone is leading worship, as I'm worshiping the Lord, he lays something on my heart that encourages me to thank him to bless him, and whatever the person singing in the front, whatever the person singing by my side, my heart's desire is, is overwhelmed with love for God, and I have to leave. I leave the constraints of a, a chorus. I leave the constraints of a verse, and I just say, God, I love you, and I thank you, and I bless you for what you've done for me. And if the worship is going, I'm singing it. I'm singing it. Because my heart is overwhelmed with love for God. Now, if I'm going to be doing that, I can't be thinking at the same time, oh, what will others think about me? Oh, I may sound silly. Or they may think I'm foolish. If already I'm distracted by what others may think, I've taken my eyes off of the Lord. It speaks about not just psalms, scripture, hymns, spiritual songs. Spiritual songs, it says here. Again, many commentaries read this and they look into the worship songs we sing today. But the word spiritual comes from the Greek pneumaticus, from where we get pneuma for spirit. The songs are spiritual. The songs are supernatural. And I believe in this case it's referring to our singing in the spirit. Singing in tongues. 
when I sing in tongues, I minister to myself and I find myself stepping into a different place in the spirit. As I said before, I went to this prayer meeting and I already had my agenda sorted. But as I began to speak in tongues and sing in tongues, the Lord began to move me to a different place in the spirit. It saddens me that in many churches, we don't encourage speaking in tongues or singing in tongues. It's a gift that the Lord has given us. I remember I had to go to a meeting once many years ago. It was a meeting I was dreading. But I knew I had to go. And so I just began to pray in tongues. I began to pray in tongues. The Bible says when we pray in tongues, we build ourselves up. By the time I got to that meeting, I was in a far different place mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and I was able to encounter this very difficult situation I found myself in. So spiritual songs speak about freely worshiping the Lord without any constraints what other people will think about me. And I begin to sing to him in tongues. Or as the Bible says, sing a new song. It says here, singing and making melody with our hearts. Does God really care about this melody in our hearts? Does God really care about the song we sing? Yes. Yes. What a beautiful gift he has given us to sing unto the Lord. So we see here making music, singing unto God is vital to being led, being filled by the Spirit. As the Spirit begins to fill me and begin to move in me, I find a freedom to worship. The Bible tells us in Acts 16, 25 to 26, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were just beaten. They were locked in the, most, in the innermost chamber of the prison, but they began to sing and praise the Lord, and prisoners were listening to them. <coughs> and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Now, we know from Paul's life, there were times when the prison doors didn't open. We know from Paul's life, there were times when he was beaten and whipped and stoned and feared for death. But it doesn't take away the fact that in this moment, as he began to praise God, a miracle took place. It makes me wonder uh, what kind of breakthrough would come to us if we just release ourselves in worshiping God as the Spirit <coughs> sorry, lays upon our hearts. Uh, um, every, my, my birthday is the 5th of June. Not that I'm looking for anything. But every 5th of June, a thought comes back to my mind. And it's a time I was preaching in London, and I was attending this church at the time, and there was this young man who wouldn't talk to me at all. I would be in the church, and he would just walk past me. I didn't take offense. And um, he just wouldn't talk to me, and I realized he was having some mental challenges, mental difficulties. He had problems with his job situation, etc., etc. He was literally locked up in his mind. And that Sunday, my birthday, I was preaching and worshiping. And as I'm standing at the door, he comes right up to me. He was totally by surprise. He began to speak to me unlike anything ever before. I'm saying, what's going on here? And while in the service, the chains on his mind broke. Amen. In the service, he was set free. In the service, he was released. And I'm thinking, God did that. And he reminds me when he sees me the 5th of June. So I want you to understand that when the Spirit is moving in our lives as we worship and as we pray and as we give him the space to move, as we open ourselves to hear his voice, he can, he can give you a word. That could be the answer to somebody's prayer. He wants to use us that way. He doesn't just want to use the leadership or the pastor. He's given you of his Spirit so that he can use you. It's no wonder that David, a man after God's own heart, wrote so many songs, played the harp, ministered to King Saul, danced naked before the Lord. Okay, we knew he wore loincloth. We believe he wore loincloth. But the point is, he was so in love with God, he cast aside every restraint and said, I'm going to just worship God with all I have. Now, I'm not saying that you must dance in church Sunday morning. But, but, if you should feel the Spirit of God. 
If you should feel the Spirit of God to need to dance, take off those shoes if the carpet is expensive and dance. I believe God wants us to move at a place in the Spirit that maybe we, could, we may be afraid of. Where, as we just totally trust Him with our lives, He's able to do things in us and through us. You see, yielding to the Spirit means you will most likely be doing something that you wouldn't naturally want to do. Do you understand me? When you look in the Scriptures, when God called these giants, these, these people we, we honor today in the Scriptures, these giants of the faith, He called people who were afraid to step out. He called people who felt they were worth nothing. He called people who were, who were ignored by the world. But He said, I'm going to put my Spirit upon you. My Spirit's going to be in you. And you're going to step out and do something for me. And I want you to understand if the Spirit of God lives in you this evening, He has enabled you, empowered you. All you have to do is trust. And yield yourself to him. Now, there'll be those who be saying, we don't want to do that. Why? There's some really uh, some strange, strange things could happen. But you know what? I'm encouraged when I see the mistakes the disciples did. It didn't put Jesus off. The sons of thunder. Lord! Those Samaritans are so rude to you. Shall we call on fire from... Come on, come on, guys. Don't take it so tough. Come on now. We see the disciples continually making mistakes. We see the disciples vying for position next to Jesus. We see them arguing who will be next to him. There were people like you and me who God touched, who God filled, and he said, step out, and they were making mistakes along the way. That encourages me so much. So we're meant to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Now this is what it says here. As we yield him, let's, let's go a bit further. It says here, <coughs> giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father. There will be times when things are happening in our lives that we won't like. But we're meant to see the bigger picture. I have found in my life, and I'm sure you'll agree with me if you're going to be honest about it, some of the most difficult times in your life produce the greatest growth in God. Amen. No one likes difficulties. No one likes challenges. No one likes, oh, we've all been there. I remember when I was working in... Heathrow Airport. I came back from the mission field. I was working in Heathrow Airport, and I'd be one of those. I began by first saying, no gels, no creams, no liquids. <laughs> Taking away people's liquids from them. And I made it into a laugh. So lots of people happily gave me their toothpaste and their perfumes. But there was a time when I was in security, and I'd be checking you coming through, you know, searching you, and I'd be working on the machines, and I'd be saying, God, I, you didn't call me to do this. I know he didn't call me to work at Heathrow. I loved Heathrow. I loved working there. But I knew that God had something different for my life. And every now and then, the devil is such a liar. Every now and then, I'd see an Elim minister coming through. <laughs> and they'd say to me, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And I just knew I had to learn some lessons in that place. And I remember one day, my church knows I've said it so many times, one day the Sikh guy was coming through security. I didn't know who he was. He was a passenger, a Sikh. And he said to me, you shouldn't be here. You should be preaching in God's house. <laughs> when, I thought, when I thought God had forgotten me, God sent a total stranger to say, I haven't forgotten you. So I want you to understand, sometimes the most difficult places you may find yourself in is where you grow spiritually. So we're meant to give thanks to God. For everything. 
But then you tell us one more thing here, and with this we're going to stop and worship and pray. <coughs> this is probably one of the most difficult verses in this scripture here. As you yield to the Spirit, you will find the ability to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. As we yield to the Spirit, we will find within us the ability to submit to one another out of reverence to Christ. You see, naturally we can't submit to one another. I've been married 32 years. That's often my wife comes to this conversation all the time. She's, she's, she's had to have a lot of patience with me. And me with her. And for God to call two strangers to live together as one requires a lot of grace. How much more when God calls strangers together, cultures together, nations together and say, I want you to be as one as I and the Father are one. There's a need, therefore, to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You see, sometimes, God bless my brothers and sisters, I offend them through them through something I may say or do. I know it's not in this church. You don't have those problems. Stepping on each other's toes. Ow, that hurts. Somebody says something, someone does something, and in that moment, are you going to yield to the Spirit of God? Are you going to yield to His agenda? You see, we yield to God as he reveals to us his will, which is why it's so important to know the word of God. Why it's so important to know God? Because the way we think and function is so unlike God. So when we have the word of God functioning in us, when we read his word and he tells us what he requires of us, our flesh kicks back. Because to do the things of God, the flesh must die. Present your body as living sacrifices, for this is your true worship. You see, worship is not what we do on a Sunday. Well, yes, we, we worship when we sing to the Lord, but true worship is when I am on the altar and the Spirit of God rules my heart and mind. If I have not yielded to the Spirit of God, He can't rule my heart and mind. And to rule my heart and mind, my flesh must hurt. But we don't want to hurt. We don't want our pride to be damaged. We don't want our feelings to be crushed. And so therefore we find ourselves when someone affects us negatively, be it in the church or be it out of the church, we want to respond naturally in the flesh. But the Bible tells us the flesh only produces death. So the challenge for us as Christians who love Jesus, we can open our hands up and say, oh, I love you, Jesus, I love you. I went to a meeting once. I've got to watch it. Okay, it came out of time. I went to a meeting once <coughs> in Wales. I invited to a meeting. People's worshipping. Oh, my goodness. The praise, the worship. Everyone was dancing. It was, they were really dancing. Kicking off their shoes and going for it all. <coughs> it's an amazing experience. And then the next morning was communion. And the pastor said, okay. You see, i got to tell you, no one had told me beforehand there was a church split. No one told me that. <clears throat> so the next morning, he says, okay, before you take the bread and the cup, which we so eagerly do, stop and reflect. Have you offended your brother? Has your brother offended you? Have you made that right? I knew things were going downhill when they brought out a whole box of tissues. It's so easy 
to gloss over these kind of scriptures and just say, I love Jesus. When what God wants from us is truth and yielding to the Spirit. I can't remember if anyone took communion that morning. It was crying. And I was born here, but I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago. Anyone's been to Trinidad and Tobago? As I grew up, we use the word ball. So people bawling. Crying out and bawling. And you did this to me, and you did that. And I was going back and forth. And I, God wants us to get real. And to get real means, do we love him enough to submit to one another? Not because it makes me feel good. Not because it makes me feel happy. Out of reverence for Christ. Because the person that annoys you or gets you upset, God loves that person. As much as you. And you may be thinking, Lord, just sort them out. Lord, just fix them. Lord, they're, oh, please, God, just deal with them. And God is saying, and what about you? <laughs> what about you? So as we yield ourselves to the Spirit of God, as we hear his voice, he tells us. You don't think he tells you? If you know the word of God, he tells you what to do. You know when he's telling you to do something and you're choosing not to. Or am I the only one? You know when God has told you to take that person's hand, to forgive that person, to love that person. And you don't want to. If you're not yielding to the Spirit, you're yielding to the flesh. And if you yield to the flesh, you're not producing life. So, we meant to understand we're part of a bigger body. Some of us are in this longer than others. God is working out his will in each and every one of us. And we've got to be patient. Can you be patient with me as God sorts me out? You may say, but you're the pastor of the church, Alex. Come on, you should be miles ahead of everybody else. He's still sorting things out in me. Ask my kids, they'll tell you. We need to be patient with one another as God sorts us out. We need to love one another even when it hurts. And, and that's how it is. Jesus loved the disciples even though at times they really got on his nerves. So I want us to go to a place of just waiting before him and worship. Amen? Amen. And what I'd like you to do as we worship, I want you to... If you know that you've been resisting the Spirit, if you know you've been pursuing your will and not his own, it's a good chance to say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for looking after my flesh. Forgive me when Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Forgive me for looking after the old man, the dead man. I want to live in the newness of Christ. Help me to do that. Good up and say, Lord, forgive me. And a good time, even if as you're worshipping, if the Lord should lay a thought upon your head, a word upon in your mind, something to encourage. Maybe he'll give you a word this evening, something to say. Maybe he may want you to minister to somebody in this place right now. <coughs> as we worship, allow him to minister through you. And to you. Amen? Are we still friends? Yeah. Good. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand Holy Spirit of God, we invite you to fill us. We invite you to have your way. And if my flesh is resisting, Lord, help me to put it back on the altar. Faith 
can move the mountains let the mountains move we come with expectation waiting here for you waiting here for you you're the lord of all creation and still you know my heart the author of salvation You've loved us from the start. We're waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise. And it's you we adore.
Hallelujah. 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 Let's worship Him. Let's give him thanks and praise. Let's worship him, lifting up holy hands. Let's worship him, for he is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus, we exalt you, Jesus, for you are worthy of our praise, you are worthy of our worship. God, we, we want to get right with you. We understand you reside in us. You dwell in us. This world is looking for God. And he lives in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He lives in us. And oh God, Thank our you, Lord. flesh. You live in us. Our flesh, our Thank flesh, God. our flesh is hindered, Lord. But tonight, we want you to have your way in our lives tonight. We want to have your way, oh God. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Your presence is. All I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek, and without it, without it, there's no meaning. Your presence is the air I breathe, the song I sing, and the love. Need and without it, without it, I'm not living. Oh, your presence, your presence is all I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek, and without it, without it, there's no meaning. Your presence is the air I breathe, the song I sing, and the love I need. And without it, without it, I'm not living. I will exalt you, Lord, and I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. Like you, God, I will exalt and I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. No other name be lifted high. I will exalt you, Lord, and I will exalt. Lord, and I will exalt you, Lord. There is no one like you, God. Oh, that's the power to exalt him. And I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. No other name. Lord, as we come before
before you this evening. I believe your word has struck a chord with us. And Lord, if we're honest with ourselves, there are times when we've allowed our flesh to have its way. Would you call us by your word to present our bodies as a living sacrifice? So tonight, oh God, I just encourage everyone to recognize that your body, your old man is dead and we have a responsibility to keep him in the grave and live in the newness of the Christian spirit that lives in us. I want to encourage you, oh God, to move in our hearts, oh God. Enable us to see, Lord, to see, Lord, that only as we obey you, only as we yield to your spirit, are we truly living. Help us to live for you, O oh God. Close the doors of the past. Close the doors of the past, O oh God, that the doors of the future will be open. Doors of new life, new trust. Oh, that's what we want from you, O oh God. The ability to walk in the power that you call us to live in. There will be no one like you. And no one beside you. You alone are worthy of all praise. Let's declare there will be no one like you and no one beside you. You alone are worthy of all praise. You cause to walk with your God. There will be no one. There will be no one like you and no one beside you. You alone are worthy of all praise. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. There will be no one like you and no one beside you. say something can we go back to the song I surrender mm -hmm. today I was uh, in a meeting this morning and there was a 26 year old young lady who's just come back from the Ukraine she was in a, 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 a group um, and she crossed over from Poland into the Ukraine and everybody was saying to the Ukrainians are saying you're going the wrong way go back mm -hmm. go back there's a war here and she jumped on buses and she ministered to people who were leaving their husbands and leaving their sons behind. And they seemed to have no hope. But her and all the people being on the bus praying and just praising God, they were filled with hope. Yes. And how was she able to do that? She was able to go in the direction of war rather than run away from it because she had a surrendered will. And as we were singing the song, I surrender, can I see the words? In my heart, I was saying, let us sing that song as a prayer. Because if we're talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit today, if we're talking about flowing in the things of God, flowing in the things of the Spirit, it starts with a submitted will to God. It starts with us saying, not my will, but yours be done. Hallelujah. I know we're saved here, and I know we haven't come to play church. I know we want more God's Spirit. I know we want to be immersed in His Spirit. And I know we want to see God moves in our lives. I know my dear friend Sylvia here. And that's our heart cry. I want to see God move. I want to see more of God. It starts with a surrendered will. And as we said, can I just see the words? Because those words just touched me so much today. Can I see those words, please? That we were singing earlier today. I surrender. No, there were the words for the song. The words of the song, your presence, what is it? What were the words of the song we were singing today? Here I am on my knees again. And go on. 
Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near. Desperate for you, desperate for you. Come like a rushing wind. Jesus okay. Breathe within. And then what's a bit about the surrender? I surrender. I want to know you more. That's I it. Surrender. And I just and I just want us to sing a kind of prayer. A little bit slower. And this is our heart today. We want to sing out to God. We want to say, I surrender to you, God. I want more of you. I want more of your spirit. I'm desperate for you. I am desperate for you today. Because when God sees a desperate heart, he, what does he do? He fills that heart. He fills us with his spirit. And that is it. Cry my heart today. Hallelujah. So let's just sing that as a prayer. Hallelujah. I surrender. Pray, O oh God, that you would uh, open our eyes afresh, that the words that's been deposited in our hearts would produce fruit for the kingdom. 
We pray that our ears would be sensitive to the leading of your spirit as he corrects us, as he teaches us through the word, but also as he ministers to us in our very own spirit. Yes. Father, bless every soul here this evening. And have your way, O oh God. Draw us closer to you and give us the confidence to step out in obedience to your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen.